What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Sean Strickland believes something's wrong with Israel Adesanya. At UFC 293, Sean Strickland backed up all of his trash talk and delivered an upset for the ages against Israel Adesanya. Leading up to the fight, there were certainly no love loss between the two. And according to Strickland, when the pair exchanged words inside the cage, after the reading of the judge's decision, Adesanya was still unhappy with comments Strickland made leading up to the fight regarding his dog. During a recent episode of the Man Dance podcast with Sean Strickland and Chris Curtis, the middleweight champ spoke about the post-fight exchange between he and the last stylebender. He looks at me, he's like, I would never make fun of your family. I'm, and I'm like, dude, like Izzy, it's the like, dog. like Izzy, I don't know your family, bro. I, do you have, I don't know if you have siblings. I don't even know f about you. This is after the fight. He starts pointing at his neck. He's like, my f dog, man, my dog. Bro, I will, I will, I will same... kill a man for my dog. Yeah, but you can't, if, if I'm like. So bottom line, Izzy, dude, I think, I think we got to need some help, man. I think like, you know when I was making fun of Khalil Roundtree? And then I had my. When are you not making fun well, of Well, no, and then, I had my, and then I had my epiphany that like. He's not just a beta male cold feminist. I had, and then I started realizing that he he has like he might be a little like mental. He has a little mental, re and he's so cold. Stomach. So far, no word yet on whether or not Strickland and Adesanya will compete in an immediate rematch next year. From the sounds of things, the UFC could very well be waiting to see how things play out between Paulo Costa and Hamza Chimaev later this month before deciding how to proceed. With Strickland's latest comments, Adesanya could look to get an immediate rematch in order to get revenge. Shout out to our first comments on yesterday's video. Thanks for the support. Next up, let's take a look at Joe Rogan reacts to Colby Covington versus Leon Edwards. At UFC 296, Leon Edwards will look to pick up his second straight title defense when he faces Colby Covington on the final pay-per-view card of the year. Leading up to the bout, longtime commentator Joe Rogan believes that Edwards has turned a corner and truly taken his game to the next level. From his spectacular knockout victory over Kamaru Usman in the pair's first meeting to the impressive takedown defense he showed in the second fight, Edwards has begun to create a championship aura around himself. While speaking on a recent episode of the Joe Rogan Experience, Rogan spoke about Edwards' evolution and his upcoming fight with Colby Covington. And Leon is now becoming that. He's become, you know, he, when he beat Kamaro the second time, everybody's like, oh, boy. Okay. And then if he can beat Colby Covington, mm. whoo, that's a big one. That's a big one because Colby puts that in pressure on you. He's got an empty, I mean, an endless gas tank. His oh. cardio is so good. His wrestling so good. He's just constant. And he just stays in your face. He just drains you. He just drains people. Kamaro's been the only guy that's been able to figure that out. Yeah. For his part, Covington doesn't seem to be too worried about the fight. During a recent interview with Submission Radio, Covington dismissed any part of Edwards' game as a threat when asked what could be the biggest challenge in the bout. The biggest challenge is if he's going to show up or not. The guys out here is soaking up on the sidelines, can playing in, uh, a little Karen over there. Oh, feel bad for me. Give me sympathy. Give me a year. Let me let me wait a year or two to to fight again. So. You know, the only thing I have to worry about is if he's going to show up or not. No matter what, boys, December 16th, I will be crowned undisputed champion of the world. So whether it's him or the next guy in line, doesn't matter to me. Whether or not he's able to make good on his promise at UFC 296, only time will tell. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at Islam Makachev breaks silence on Habib. While Habib Nurmagomedov has no plans to corner his longtime friend and training partner Islam Makachev in his UFC 294 clash against Charles Oliveira, the Eagle will spend time helping the lightweight champ prepare for his title defense. During a recent interview with ESPN, Makachev spoke about the final preparations for the fight and Nurmagomedov's plan to join the team. Yeah, tomorrow he will come to Dubai to join his us in the camp. He's going to be here. He's not going to be my corner, of course, but he will be here to uh, help. We come here like 20 guys, whole team. Uh, I don't know five day where it's going to be, but next two weeks he's going to be here with us, I think. He's going to watch the old sparring and he's going to train with us. He likes to train, he likes to do some grappling. It's training every day. While Nurmagomedov isn't expected to be in attendance at UFC 294, he'll certainly be keeping a close eye on the action to see how things play out. Next, let's take a look at fight updates. 
This week, some pretty big fights were reported for upcoming cards before the end of the year and for the year ahead. First up, we have some big news in the bantamweight division. According to Dominance MMA's Ali Abdelaziz, who spoke in a recent interview with the Schmo, Henry Cejudo has accepted an offer to fight Marab Devashvili in January. The bout would almost certainly be a title eliminator, and while it hasn't been finalized, Cejudo took to Twitter to tell Devashvili signed the contract. The tweet also caught the attention of bantamweight champion Sean O'Malley, who tweeted, holy short, that will be a sweet fight. Before that thrilling fight takes place, however, fans will be treated to a recently announced bout between Armin Sarukian and Benil Dariush, which has reportedly been verbally agreed upon for December. While the bout hasn't been finalized yet, the fight is reportedly being targeted for UFC 296. During a recent interview with Luke Thomas, Dariush spoke about the fight, saying, yeah, that's what they've been telling me, but uh, I'm not sure yet. We're I, Once I get the contract, I'll know for sure. I'll be like, yeah, this is it. But I, I, I think so. I think that's the fight that's going to happen, and I'm pretty excited about it. According to Ali Abdelaziz, who spoke with the Schmo, the new year will also see Umar Nurmagomedov look to return in either February or March. With the bantamweight rankings being incredibly stacked, it's safe to say his return will create a number of interesting matchups in the division. Last but certainly not least, we have an update from Ali Abdelaziz via his interview with the Schmo regarding Derek Brunson. After parting ways with the UFC, Brunson has reportedly signed with the PFL and plans to make the jump to 205. Derek Brunson, he, he signed with PFL. He's a PFL fighter. Uh, he's gonna fight before end of the year. Uh, you know, PFL, you know, uh, he did a lot for the UFC, UFC did a lot for him, he have a great career, he have crazy schedule, fought Whitaker, fought Arasania, fought Kevin Holland, fought all the guys, uh, Darren Tilt, and now, you know, he's he's looking to make his, you know, his run at uh, light heavyweight title uh, for uh, PFL. Next, let's take a look at Fighter Calls Out the UFC's Ranking Ahead of his clash with Bobby Green, Grant Dawson believes that the UFC's rankings aren't actually used to determine matchups. While using former champ champ Conor McGregor as an example, he pointed out the flaw in the ranking system while speaking in an interview with MMA Fighting. There, there are guys in the lightweight rankings that I don't even consider being in the lightweight rankings because there's no chance of me fighting them. For example, if Conor and... Uh, Chandler fight each other, which I still don't think is going to happen. But if it does happen and Connor knocks out Michael Chandler, and let's just say they put him at number five, just just for example, they put him at number five. I don't consider him number five because there's no way they'll ever put Grant Dawson versus Connor McGregor. While Dawson explained that he understands why McGregor or Chandler wouldn't accept a fight against him as an up-and-comer, it sounds as though his comments opened the door to another discussion entirely regarding rankings. Currently ranked 10th in the division, Dawson will have a chance to improve his place in the rankings when he faces Bobby Green this weekend at the UFC Apex. Let's take a look at UFC fighters get exposed for cheating. Bobby Green believes there's a reason that Dagestani and Russian fighters are achieving success at such an astonishing rate inside the octagon. Heading into his upcoming clash with Grant Dawson this weekend, Green alleged that Russian fighters are exploiting USADA. During a recent appearance on the Jackson podcast, co-hosted by MMA legend Rampage Jackson, he stated, I just be feeling like, like the Russians be cheating right now. You know, disrespect to none of the Russian people, if you my fans, I'll f you, but I'll be seeing some funny that I'm like, oh, because I know people all around and in the different sections and stuff. And like, for instance, Khabib and Islam, them, they go to a mosque, you know? They train in some place where they can't be, you can't go to Usada, can't come in here for months. They can do whatever they want to do. Actually, uh, Islam got caught for drugs, you know what I mean, when he first came. So far, Makachev has yet to respond to Green's comments as he undergoes his final preparations for his UFC 294 clash with Charles Oliveira. With the lightweight champ likely to speak with media members a number of times during fight week leading up to the UFC 294 clash, don't be surprised if Makachev is asked about Green's recent accusations. Next up, let's take a look at John Jones reacts to Conor McGregor sparring. This week, Conor McGregor broke some major news announcing that he had sent everything necessary to begin the return process to Jeff Nowitzki. The news came via McGregor's Instagram account and included a number of photos of the former champ champ training for what many believe is his big return fight against Michael Chandler. He captioned the photos with a message which read, find my targets, hit them. The consequences, you're going down. This is fighting, sparring day with slick Nikolai Grozdev. Always a banger of a spar with a slick fella. Submitted my stuff to Nowitzki, ball rolling. See you soon, you little light work. In a separate post, McGregor shared footage of himself sparring, drawing plenty of attention from fans and his peers. 
In the comments section of the post, John Jones responded writing, McGregor looking smooth with it. The comment was quick to catch the attention of fans, who are eager to see both men compete inside the octagon again. While Jones is set to headline UFC 295, the latest speculation is that McGregor could return for UFC 300 next year. However, nothing has been finalized. But the MMA community roasted Connor over this footage. Here's what some fans had to say. Sharp where? Imagine he keeps his hands down like this versus anyone in the lightweight top five. He's getting slept again. I hate to say this, but Michael Chandler is going to kill this man. One thing that always remains the same is the intensity of all of Connor's partners. It seems as if they're going at 30% less intensity than Connor. It could be that he's that much better, but you never see him get pressured or hit much in this videos. The back doesn't hit back kind of situation here. Top comments. My guy Jake Shields was only doing God's work. Thank you, Mr. Shields. Leon doesn't draw the crowd without Kobe. I'm sure the UFC wants Kobe to win too. Tony will KO Patty. Chandler's gonna waste his whole career waiting for Connor just to know it will never happen. He's acting maniacal about it. I bet when Connor says, submitted my stuff, he's referring to a request for an exemption. He wants someone to blame other than him for the fight never happening. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.